Welcome to Grief Sucks Life After Loss. I'm here today with Andrea. Hello. How are you today? I'm pretty good. How are you? I'm good. Thanks for agreeing to share your story with us today. Yeah, no problem. Um, I have a lot of experience with grief, unfortunately. Unfortunately, um, yes. <laughs> yeah, that's one of those things like it's uh, one of those skills that it's good to have because then you can become relatable to other people and you know what I mean? But it's awful but, that it's a skill that you have. Exactly. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I think the, I, re, I was talking to my therapist about this last week and I was like, okay, so I'm going to go do this thing. And he was like, all right. Like, well, what are you going to talk about? And I was like, just grief in general, you know, it's like, it's like, okay. He's like, well, what do you think that you're going to get out of it? And I was like, if it's going to help somebody else, then I'm, that I'm here for that. <laughs> like, as far as I know that eventually reflecting back on things, it'll come to me in a different way later on down the road, maybe. If that I makes agree. sense. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that just freely talking about it, maybe to someone other than your therapist, um, I think that helps in a sense too. But I do think what we're doing um, will help a lot of other people who may feel alone or um, like Shelby and I talked about, we're dark people when it comes to death. Like, yes. <laughs> we're not really normal. So uh -huh. for those people that are going through things like that and you're, you have those odd thoughts that you, you're like, this is not normal for dealing with this stuff. But it is. I mean, you're not the only one out there like this. Yeah, definitely. Um, I was, I had uh, one of my cousins who was younger than me about three or four weeks ago. Um, I got a phone call and one of my aunts told me that he got shot and killed. And I was like, oh my gosh, like, oh no. what? So um, this, is, he was 32 and it was a, uh, just a very, very sad situation of what had occurred. And, you know, a lot of living in a small town, there's a lot of assumptions about what really happened. And, you know, so things can get messy in that regard, too, and make it that much more difficult when you're trying to grieve. So it's well, I'm sorry to hear about that. That's trying to trying to help the family you know see through all the the web of nonsense you know and that's hard sometimes yeah for sure definitely and it's a uh, at 32 geez it seems yeah. like the deaths are getting younger and younger <laughs> and it's almost like every time every morning i open facebook there's somebody dying and there's more and more younger people and more and more kids and it's hard to make sense of it. You know, it's like, oh, yeah. why, why? It just doesn't make sense to me. And I, I do struggle with that, that aspect of it. Oh yeah. Yeah. We, uh, we had a tragic accident happen, um, on our property over the summer and it involved, uh, one of our travel soccer um girls uh drown in a lake and just not only going through it as an adult but then watching all these kids experience that type of trauma that young and everything like it just it's still really hard but then like I see how the girls honor her you know and at every chance that they get and I'm like at least they're, you know, they're trying to find their own way through things. It's wild. How do you, because I have thought about you guys a lot since that. Um, what did you do to help your daughter kind of get through that loss? Because, I mean, that was huge for her, right? Oh, yeah. Um, she was she was down there whenever it happened. Um, so, you know, as a parent. 
your mind's everywhere. Like, oh my gosh, you know, what's the right thing to do? So we just, Thomas and I both handle grief very differently. Um, I now know that I have to go and talk to somebody and I need to talk it out to the fullest extent before I can come to grips with it and then move along. Mm -hmm. That's not how Thomas is. Um, he's, his process is, seems much quicker and more just keep moving in his way. way. Yes, yep. exactly. So I remember, I mean, I tried that at one point in my life. That didn't work for me either. But And we, we all process everything differently and it work it, talking to a therapy therapist works for you. When I went to a therapist, I'm like, I'm pretty sure you never lost anybody a day in your life. You're probably not working out for me. I went and I was done. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I mean, um, I was really open with Emma about why I needed to go to therapy and what I was experiencing. Um, I mean, I kept it. I didn't give her the full script version of it, but, you know, I was very open with her about the things that I was dealing with and that from things that I've experienced in the past, I know that certain things are going to hit me differently at cert- at different times. So mm-hmm. I knew that, you know, being around all of the girls after that happening was going to be really hard for me. Like, it, that's just how my, my brain works. And, you know, at the same time, it was really comforting to see them all together, too. So, um, I explained that part to her. Um, Thomas asked her if she would be interested in going to talk to anybody. And she said, no, she wanted to be more artistic and she journals that kind of thing. So that part works for her. And that works for me too. That was a, that was a big part of mine was journaling and writing letters and just a lot of self-reflection. But Mm -hmm. as a parent, it's so hard to navigate that. You don't know. A, they mostly don't want to talk to you about it. And in a sense, maybe they don't know how. Um, but you just don't know if you're doing it right, if you're doing it wrong, if you're going to fuck your kids up, if you're, you don't know how to navigate it. And we're all just, oh, yeah, it. definitely. And that's the thing, like, I try to, if I know that I'm having one of those days where my anxiety, I, as soon as I wake up, it's already at like 70% whenever I hit my feet hit the ground, I try and keep that in the back of my head that whenever I are, go to 100 really quickly, it's because, hey, you started out here today mm-hmm. and you only had this much before you were t- tapped out. And that's okay. So yeah, absolutely. Tr- trying to explain that to Emma too. Like you're going to have days where it's going to hit you harder and you're not going to be able to give as much as you maybe you want to. And that's okay. Yeah. Some days you can give it your all. And so some days you don't got anything to give. You're, you're happy you, you got up today. Exactly. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's wild. That's for but sure. But it's all okay. It's part of navigating and it's part of learning how you get through things like this and the grieving process doesn't, I don't think it ever goes away. I think we're always going to have those days, especially when it was tragedy or sudden or things like that, that those you're going to have those days where sometimes you're going to cry all day or you're going to cry for Mm -hmm. a moment and then you're fine or something's going to remind you of that person or whatnot. I had, um, it was last year at the nephew's birthday party. Um, literally, I woke up and I cried all day. The entire day. I left his birthday party, drove all the way home to get his gift, and drove all the way back. <laughs> and I just cried all day long. I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with me? Like, why can't I stop? <laughs> yep. Yep. That I had a similar situation. Uh, the birthday, Emma's birthday after my mom died. I remember, like, I was so anxious about all of those holidays. Like, my mom passed away in, let's see, May of 2020. And then it was 
my sister's birthday was like that following weekend after the service, I guess my birthday and then Emma's birthday. So it was just, you know, several like things that my mom would have been there for right away. And she wasn't. And I was so, so anxious about it. I was like, just don't have any expectations about the day. Just let it happen. But my anxiety was already at 200 percent yeah and you know like the smallest thing would go wrong and I'm like oh okay well I'll go do that just so that I can like have a second to myself and just like feel whatever is happening and then the mom guilt sets in I'm like oh I'm supposed to be at my kid's birthday party but here I am running trying to go get water balloons that somebody else easily could have gotten but like wanting that control over something if that makes sense oh absolutely and I mean you like you said the mom guilt sets in but at the same time I mean you can only do so much and sometimes you have to walk away because if not you're a slobbering ass mess in front of everybody and then then you have to explain to everybody and everybody's like what's wrong and you're like I don't want to deal with that either so just tuck myself away for a minute (laughs) Try exactly to yeah and come back and try again <laughs> reset if you will <laughs> yes the yeah like this time of year the holidays setting and like now at this point like I don't have any parents left so that's interesting uh you know I'm 35 and it's just me and my siblings and our our families that we've created now Mm -hmm. so it's a very very weird thing and I imagine that on your end too being so close to Valerie and everything that this is a hard time of year for you too oh yeah holidays are I mean holidays are hard regardless but we try to I don't know we try to just keep pushing through like uh this year I really want it to be in the whole holiday spirit and Dylan's like Mm -hmm. no not at all yeah our our tree here at the house isn't set up or anything yet we're we're behind schedule (laughs) mine is up and it has lights and it's not going to get anything else that's as far as we're gonna go uh we don't have stockings we have bags and I think I have bags last year too I know I love that (laughs) I think we did the same thing last year because we didn't pull everything out of the attic. We just got down the necessary stuff Mm -hmm. and it is what it is. I mean, we're just going to go with it and it doesn't have to be anything fancy, but we'll get through it as we always do. Um, But of course we're, we'll miss those people that are no longer with us and it does make holidays a little bit harder. Yeah. It's, it's weird because like, my uh traditionally in my family like I would host Thanksgiving my sister hosts Christmas and then my mom would host Easter so now that mom's out of the mix Easter just kind of doesn't it just falls to the wayside but it's like the week before the holiday and my sister and I are like oh yeah hey are we hanging out are we are we getting together are we gonna do anything and I'm like it's just it's because not the Easter, same. Easter is one that we've totally skipped since KJ has been gone. We just simply don't mm-hmm. we don't do anything. We normally we either we've done the movies, uh, we get in the car and just road trip it, but we don't we don't do anything for Easter anymore. But my kids are grown too, so that makes yeah. it. It's just Different sometimes type I, of traditions too. Yeah, and I feel like sometimes when you're missing those people, like some holidays, you would just totally skip if you had the option to. Yeah. Easter's an easy one to skip, so we just do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's the one out. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's interesting. Like I remember so much about the holidays, specifically with, uh, you know, my parents from whenever I was really little. And, like, all of those little traditions that, like, now I don't have access to that house anymore. I don't have access to all of those special little things, you know, not just my parents, but 
just the the way that it ripples out and I think that makes it that much harder to miss them during the holidays because you're not just missing them as a person you're missing everything that goes along with it all of those memories Mm -hmm. and things yeah it's I don't know it's a whole lot of emotions when especially when it comes to holidays and then you find new traditions and you find Mm -hmm. new like you said, the families that you created, we've, I think we've all always been big on those. Um, mm-hmm. It's just crazy. Just the, yeah. just crazy. <laughs> There's no other way to put it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and then, I mean, there's so many different levels of grief because then you can also grieve like the, the person that you were during that time too. Like you are no longer ever gonna be that same Mm -mm. person again because the the tables have turned and now that's just not reality i was thinking about that this morning i'm like i'm not the person i was two years ago Mm -hmm. um yeah and i mean like and it's it's strange too because the person that i was prior to my parents passing away is very different than the person that I feel like I am now, but I feel like I've grown so much in a positive way that sometimes that feels weird too, because I'm like, oh, well now they're gone and now I'm feeling better, you know? A hundred percent. I think about that all the time because there's some things I'm like with the studio, I think if, KJ was still here. Would I have that? Mm-hmm. I don't think I would. And then you feel bad because you've accomplished something. You're doing something for you, but you also feel like, damn, did he have to die for me to get to where I am now? Yeah. That's absolutely. a huge, that's a huge guilt for me. Um, because uh-huh. I often think about things that we do and I'm like, did it all have to go in sequence to get here? Mm-hmm. And so when you find happiness in certain things, you almost feel bad. I lost you. Yeah. Oh no. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. I can hear you, but I can't see you. That's okay. Okay. I can um, see you and hear you. <laughs> I don't know what happened. I don't know. I can hear you. So we're just going to keep going. Does that work? Uh, so, yeah, I mean, often it's just, you feel bad. Because you're happy. <clears throat> yeah. I guess. If that makes sense. Yeah. Or like you've accomplished things that, yes, of course you wish they are here for and could, you know, be along that journey of being happy and excited for you and with you. But, you know, would it have all gone the same? Right. Yeah. Yeah get that day that so I do you think my, the day that I got my uh mom's inheritance check whenever we were closing out her estate I had just started hair school and I was just on like cloud nine because I had finally done something that I've always wanted to do for myself and it, it just I didn't expect that little piece of paper to make such a big impact mm-hmm. in my head. And as soon as I got it in my hands, I was like, this is it. That's all that's left. There's nothing like I lose this and then nothing. Yep. It was such a weird feeling. Yeah. It's uh, there's so many tiny parts and then, yeah, you get that, that last, you know, finalization of finalizing all the things. And you're like, well, shit now what yeah because now there's meanwhile everyone else has been moving on the entire time now you're just kind of barely starting to go yep at least in my situation that's how it was no 100 percent. i totally feel like most people were continuing as i mean as they should because clearly it, it affects us way differently than everybody else um and you can't be mad at people for that but it does it feels like your life stopped for uh for mine was a solid year before 
I felt like it even yeah. started to life again. Um, the second year was a little bit better getting into, but I feel like next year will be where we're really into the swing of things or back to life fully. Right. Um, but yeah, you feel like everybody else kept going and you just got stuck here and trying to figure it out and wing it and finalize the things. And once you finish that up, you're just like, Oh, yep. Well, that's, that's it. It's totally it. Yeah. Like that, the finalization of that. like, even I remember when we were picking out the headstones and stuff like that, like that didn't even seem solidified to me by that point. And that was, you know, so much, seems so much earlier on in the process of whenever I lost my parents that we, they, we put my dad's urn in with my mom. So we just did one Mm -hmm. headstone for them. But even like once that was set, I was like, okay, that's just like a little chip off the, you know, off of the little grief tree that I'm on right now. Like, okay, I made it through that. So weird. But like you said, that's that's early on too, though. So you're still kind of in that fog. Mm -hmm. I felt like I was in that fog for shit, at least six months, but probably most of the first year. Mm -hmm. I have no idea how I got through anything (laughs) exactly and I mean you're just every every day every hour sometimes minute by minute like it's just takes everything out of you and that's okay because that's how you heal through it is by taking the time to recognize like okay I gotta do the best that I can in order to get to my next you know that next checkpoint whatever that is right yep plus you gotta take care of all the things and the kids and Mm -hmm. try to take care of yourself and manage everything yeah definitely and I mean like losing anybody I feel like there's an element of this Especially if it's, if you're, if it's unexpected, you know, like this element of you never get rid of that shock factor. Of, oh my God. I just never saw it coming. I never expected that that's how this was going to go. Yeah. That's a hard one when you don't, obviously any death is hard, but when it's such a shock and there was literally nothing to show you it was coming, there was no rhyme or reason. It just suddenly happened is I think Christy and I talk about it often. Like, do you think it's better to know? And I feel like the grieving is, and prepare for. I feel like the grieving is different. If, if you are, I agree. If you, if you know, like with my dad, we knew like it was stage four the cancer that he had. So like we pretty much like, I didn't understand what hospice was whenever my mom was like, oh, hospice is coming in. I'm like, okay, cool. They're going to help him out. Like, bring him on in. (laughs) And then, like, everyone, like, my grandparents are there and they have, like, you know, like, the preacher that I haven't seen in years. I'm like, who is this dude and why is he here? Like, everyone, like, what's going on? And how old was you when your dad was sick? Um, let's see. I would have been 24. Yeah. Because I I had Emma early because my dad was going in for a stem cell transplant. And we weren't sure if he was going to make it back out of that. So Mm -hmm. I set up an induction date with my my doctor. And uh, so my dad got to meet Emma before she, or before he passed away. And he lasted a couple of months after that. But it was a... very he was very very sick and deteriorated really quickly after that which was very hard to watch absolutely not not only as a daughter but as a brand you know a new mom and everything Mm -hmm. else so don't mind me oscar was just begging to be on camera (laughs) he was trying to beat down the door earlier (laughs) 
Do you think you, which it was a different type of grief. Do you think you handled it differently from when your dad passed to when your mom passed? Yes. With my dad, I didn't really, um, like I was working in a hospital setting whenever it was happening. And, uh, so I, you know, I felt like I knew a lot of what was going on or could go on that kind of thing, because I had a lot of different people that I could call to and be like, Hey, my dad's having this, like, why, why typically does somebody have to have this type of testing? If I had questions and didn't fully understand it, or if my parents needed things, you know, deciphered. So that was yeah. different because I think in my head, it was more of like a, okay, there's definitely a medical reason right now. And that's what's going on. That's what's wrong. And the end of this equation equals death. Like that's just what this equation equals. So because it was laid out so logically for me, I feel like that was quite a bit easier for me to wrap my head around. I still struggled with it, of course, but yeah, absolutely. Because I could pinpoint different things to, okay, well, you know, this test didn't go correctly. So now that's why we're here. And just having those answers made it very different for my brain to go through the process of like, yeah, it sucks that he's not here, but yeah, he's, he was in a lot of pain and all of those things, you know, you can see it very differently. Whereas if it's unexpected and you're like, what do you mean? <laughs> They're just not here anymore. Right. Yeah. Is uh, therapy the your main thing that's helped you with grief, with your grief? Uh, therapy, journaling. Um, I'm definitely a pen or pencil to paper type of person. Mm -hmm. um, I find that my head quiets quite a bit more if I write things out and give myself the time to actually try to solve the problem myself, like, so mm -hmm. to speak, you know, I'm like, okay, because I'm, I'm the person that's going to dig and be like, why do you feel like this? Why? Like at the end of the day, like, let's get to the root of the problem. But that's good. Cause that's really what's right. needed. And that was one of my big things was a lot of self-reflection, a lot of really feeling it to be able to heal better uh, right not quicker but better and be okay with what has happened yes a, a more well-rounded um I feel like it's a more well-rounded understanding of how you feel at the end of the day whenever you've gone through the self-reflection aspect of it for sure it was funny. So the therapist that I'm seeing now is not the therapist that I saw whenever my mom passed away. Uh, this new guy got dropped <laughs> in my lap, like the day that, like the day or two after everything happened at the property. And I was like, uh, "Oh my goodness!" Hey, sorry. Here's a quick rundown on my past trauma, and then let's get to the meat and potatoes <laughs> yes. of why we're here. <laughs> I like, holy shit! Yeah, and he was like, "Well." I mean, he's like, honestly, I'm really impressed with like how self-aware you are. And I was like, well, thanks. But like, also we're going nuts up here. Let's figure it out. <laughs> right. We, we, we need some help today. Yes. I'm here for the <laughs> racquetball conversation that I need. <laughs> and like, that's, that's really what I use therapy for is just to have somebody that I guess can have that open-mindedness about whatever it is that I'm speaking on and then be like oh okay well I'm gonna ask this see how they respond and then see where my head goes with it it just works for me and a lot of people it does work for a lot of people need therapists and somebody else to talk to and it also helps to have someone who don't really know your life exactly you get that. to tell what you want to tell and they don't know any backstories and things like that and and even if you're not seeing a therapist, maybe that's a new friend or something like that, that they don't know shit about your life. They're just coming into it in the mix of the chaos and they see it differently. Yeah. 
And oh, yeah, that for is sure. help that's helpful. Absolutely helpful. Um because sometimes you don't want to talk to people who know Yeah. All of your fucking anything. Life. And yeah. yeah. The response is different, I think. Yeah. I, I have also figured out um this is my first male therapist that um I've ever spoke with before. And the I feel more open with him and I don't know if it was because I just had to lay everything out right on the at the very first appointment and like <laughs> immediately <get> in, <laughs> yeah and just get into like hey help me please right now and I don't know <laughs> if that's why our relationship is different or what but like I think I might have find my finally found a really good therapist like my the other people I've seen in the past I'm like eh. Like, I guess it's working or like, I think it's time for us to break up for a little bit and I'll come back to you whenever I feel like I need your assistance kind of thing. It was a very on my terms relationship with my therapist in the past. Whereas now I feel like I'm more invested in the long term of making sure my well being is in check. But I think that's just like finding a doctor that you like. I mean, you, especially with therapy, you have to find somebody that get you who you don't feel judged who's gonna go along with it and who you're comfortable spilling all your shit to Mm -hmm. i mean i think that's just part of the process and you may go through several like i said the guy that i seemed super nice um really liked him but i don't think he knew a damn thing about grief so i wasn't staying and then by then i'm like because it was later on um when i decided to see a therapist and then by then i'm like look, I've done half did this shit by myself, so I'm going to just keep going. Exactly. <laughs> I wasn't I mean, interested in finding nobody else. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and it get, it does, it gets exhausting. I mean, it's almost what, I mean, I'm happy that this therapist happened to fall into my lap the way that it, that it worked out, but I mean, I, a couple of people that I know have been shopping for their mental health providers and Mm -hmm. it breaks my heart to to see them going through like that's not the one for sure and you know and then you have to keep repeating the same shit of why you're here in the first place exactly (laughs) yes you're like can you just give me my my book that you wrote down so i can just pass it from one person to another they can read it before i even meet them and we see where we're at yeah there's gonna be a better way here to to (laughs) shop for a therapist (laughs) Uh uh-huh yeah I mean it's it's definitely a and I wonder if they do it as like a test to see like how open you'll really be with them versus the notes that your previous provider may have handed off to them but also I mean when anyone takes notes typically it only makes sense to you not to right. anybody else. <laughs> so yeah. unless you're getting real specific about what's, you know, your, your charting aspect of things. Right. Which most people are. So yeah. Well, is there anything else you would like to share? I don't know. I mean, it's been, it's interesting to see like the amount of grief and tragedy that has happened in the time that Thomas and I have been married to each other, you know, and to see how truly differently everyone really does handle their shit. And at the end of the day, like you just got to find your people that get you and that you're okay with being who you are. Yeah. You know, unapologetically. Yep. Yeah. Just like, Hey, I'm, I know I'm being a tyrant today, but you got to tough it out because this is where I'm at. Right. Yeah. I, it's a, I, I mean, yeah, since you and Thomas have been together, I mean, there's been a lot of shit. Yeah. Just overall. In between deaths and uh, lost friendships and shitty family members and just mm-hmm. the variety of things like life is crazy and sometimes you sit back you're like whose fucking life is this and who does this shit like exactly <laughs> literally yes. like- i was talking to i was talking to nancy last night and we're like 
what the fuck? Like, who does this? Uh, I know. It's it's crazy. And I mean, of course, every family thinks that their family is the craziest family on the planet. But by far, I will say, (laughs) we might take a cake or two. We we definitely take a couple on some of the sides. It's it's fine. <laughs> We're there. Yeah. You know, but like at the same time, it's it's really cool to see the people who are your people even within your like in my family I was taught, you know, blood is blood and they're always there and that kind of thing. But and the reality of it, like it takes two people or you know, it's effort on each side and Mm -hmm. you know if one side feels slighted in any type of way then you know a wall goes up and you're just like all right well I'm here if you decide to do xyz you know and it's hard to as an it's hard as a as an adult to have to like puff your chest out and have to say those things to people that you thought like were your people that's hard yeah but in as when i've learned more recently that when death comes man you lose a shit ton of people oh yeah like a lot of people that you wouldn't think and then on the other side of it you have people show up that maybe was just acquaintances for years, never really in your friend circle or never really hung out close. But then they are the ones that show up and are like, Hey, what do you need? And they're there, which yeah, blew my mind. Um, of that, the whole aspect of how all that played out. But, and then you find new people that may have not been in your life if this didn't happen. So it's just yeah. all, it's all fucked up. Definitely. <laughs> it's, just, it's just crazy. Um, but this is the life we're living in. What do you do? You keep going and Yeah. F- for me, there's no other option. You just keep going and see how the shit plays out. Yeah. I mean, definitely. It's my uh so my mom's side of the family is quite large. She was one of ten kids. And oh, wow. uh there's Eight, eight out of the ten kids are still living, and uh, they're everyone. All, all of my mom's family kind of lives about forty-five minutes away from me here, and uh, I jokingly was talking to my therapist about going to my cousin's funeral, and I was like, "Oh yeah, well I'm going to the family funeral home," and he was like, "What?" And I was like, "Oh, like since I've been six years old, anyone who dies in our family, that's." They go there, like, no questions about it. And then you get buried here. And and there's that twisted sense of humor. You're like, it's me. (laughs) Like, oh, other people don't have this? What do you mean? Jeez. And, you know, like, it's sad, but, you know, at funerals, it's a, people come in from out of town, and it's a time that you usually don't get to see people. So my family is twisted and morbid. So we take pictures and Thomas, Thomas thought that was real fucked up. He was like, what are you guys? He was like, what are you guys doing? I was like, it's closed casket. It's fine. Her hair looks fine (laughs) in there. She didn't know. Oh man. Yeah. It's a weird, funny, uh, funny thing that happened at my cousin's funeral I was standing there talking to my aunt and a couple of my cousins one of my uncles walks up behind me he's using a walker and everything and he looks at me and was like oh my gosh hey how are you and I was like oh I'm doing great it's so nice to see you and he was like I have been calling your mom and she has not been answering me oh my god like, have you have you talked oh. to her and I was like you Holy know what? Shit. I've been calling her she hasn't either but if i talk to her i'll tell her that she needs to get a hold of you (laughs) meanwhile the rest of my family all turns their backs to me because they can't keep a straight face (laughs) and all i'm thinking is if her brother doesn't know that she's dead i'm not gonna tell him in the middle of the family funeral home where he's gonna be next 
Yeah, no. I I don't just... And then you get to a point where you're like, if you don't joke about the shit, what, what do you do? Please. I mean, yeah, if he if he didn't know and we're, three, what, three years in? Yeah. <laughs> Poor uh-huh. guy. I know. I'm like, it's you cool. I'll, I'll let her know. Nobody invited him to the funeral? <laughs> oh. oh, no. Yeah, so oh, one of my aunts was like, oh, did you take your vitamin whatever today? And he was like, I don't know. Oh. I'm like, it's cool. Yeah, we're definitely gonna, not going to repeat that she died. No, re- like, no reason for it. I don't think so at this point. <laughs> No, we did, uh, when my grandma was dying, uh, she used to talk about my grandpa who had passed years before her mm-hmm. and she would talk about him like he was alive. And finally you just get to the point, um, where why argue with her? Why tell her he's not just, yeah. he's wherever you think he is. Uh, if that makes you happy, then that's what, that's the story I'm going with. Exactly. And so you. Some people would get mad and some people would argue with her. And I'm like, for what though? She's yeah. fucking dying. She just tell her what she wants to hear. Make her yeah. happy. Yeah, <laughs> she... Exactly. Exactly. And I'm like, you know, I'm not going to tell her over and over again that her husband died. I'm, I'm not the one. Yeah. Like why, why make someone it's, you know, kind of like the 51st States thing. Like, right. And I have a horrible day every day. Exactly. That's awful. No, no. let's not do that. And just, no. you know what? I haven't heard from them either. And what an asshole they are. Right. But hey, tell them, call me if you, if you do talk. Exactly. To yes. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. One of my friends, she's a, a psychic medium. So um, I, I kind of have like a somewhat of a direct link into my parents whenever I feel the need or if they have something that they really need to tell me all of a sudden I'll get a call from her which I mean we talk regularly but I'll get a serious phone call and she's like hey your mom told me this and it's like I'm tired of listening to this song and you just gotta know this stuff and I'm like okay cool thanks (laughs) and but it's those little tidbits that you're like oh okay she's there that's exactly little those little things um seeing a medium did help me Mm -hmm. a lot um so yeah I mean and he and I are now friends so he will be he has agreed to be on the podcast so hopefully it'll be the next setup um but yeah it's nice to have those little tidbits that you're just like okay just even if you weren't thinking about it that is it's just there to carry yeah. you through. Exactly. Yeah. And she'll just like, or I'll randomly, there's a certain part of the, um, our driveway, whenever I'm driving, like to leave, I always see cardinals like mm-hmm. swoop down right there. And I'm like, oh, and like, I saw, um, my mom's a dragonfly. I learned that, which I mean, I okay. always kind of suspected that, but yeah, she's a, she's a dragonfly. Um, I'm, I think my dad's a squirrel, but I haven't figured out his actual creature yet, so to speak. <laughs> I think KJ's is a red bird. We have a certain one um, that I think is him. But today, I wa- <laughs> we have a breezeway, and I walked out. Um, <clears throat> I walked outside to go feed the cow, and a male red bird stuck on my breezeway. Not the one that I think is KJ. So I catch him. <laughs> And put my hand out for him to fly away. And the little bastard turned around and bit the shit out of me before he left. <laughs> I was like, look. <laughs> Which is crazy to me because for years, KJ talked shit about you're the animal whisperer. All the animals like you. Look. Mm-hmm. Not lately. The bird done bit the shit out of me. Oh, no. We went, we went to the petting zoo last night. And there was a reindeer. I've been wanting to see a reindeer. He wasn't having it. Oh, no. Then they had camel, and I love me some camel. And me and this camel was friends for a minute, so we weren't. Then he tried to fucking eat me. (laughs) So then when I got the bird this morning, I was like, look, fuck these animals. (laughs) I'm done. 
I'm done. They all used to like me, but not anymore. <laughs> they said, uh, come back to us in 2024. Maybe, maybe we'll yeah. turn over a new leaf by then. <laughs> <laughs> this is not working. I'm like, what is wrong? I'm not used to this reaction from animals. <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh. That's crazy. One day we'll get some animals out here. Like a One cow day. you can have? For I know. Yeah. I, I got I got to find another cow for him to have a friend though. I think Thomas said no. I know. But what's he going to do if the cow's just here? <laughs> I don't know how I got here. He walked this whole way. We can't send him back. And these are the shenanigans <laughs> that we get into. Exactly. <laughs> Why I can't be trusted. All right, girl. Well, we're going to end it on that note. I appreciate you being here and sharing some of your story with us. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me. It was good. All right. Thank you. We will, maybe we'll see you again. All right. Sounds good. All right. Thank you. Bye. Bye.